Hello, Tim here. In this video, I'm taking you through my process of capturing this lovely harbour scene of Timmouth, Devon, UK, in watercolour. We're looking at a beautiful scene that's going to test pretty much every skill in our watercolour toolkit um, as follows. First of all, the reflections in the water and that transparency, trying to capture the subtle variations in this murky water here in the in the foreground including the ripples and reflections around different objects that's going to require pretty careful layering of, of washes and thinking about the the ratio of water to pigment as well next we've got value transitions the scene has got lots of strong contrast between the dark stone steps there on the left hand side in the foreground and the bright sky the dark shadows on this side of the boats and the light hitting the tops of those boats that's going to require again good planning to preserve the the whites and, and manage those those tonal gradations we've got some architectural elements over here top left corner the apartment or buildings there along the shore they've got precise geometric shapes and, and details that would need to be well we need to we need to carefully render them and try and maintain a loose approach to it and also think about the perspective also of those of those lines coming down there right there 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 and then well I guess this is by this is pretty much my eye line here. So that's the horizon, but thinking about that, go right to the top, that line there, you'll see we're getting, getting quite steep. Um, we've got multiple boat shapes, all sort of intermingled with each other, a few closer to us. Um, we've got to try and think about connecting all these different boat shapes, um, different forms and, and textures of those boats. Um, without trying to overwork them. I mean, the, cl the closer we look at a boat, we, we can see loads of details, signage, um, woodwork, bits and pieces on top of the, on top of the boat. So again, I'm um, trying to think about, trying to hold myself back, not to overwork the details and preserve the white, uh, the white paper for the, the boat highlights at the top, you know, particularly those, there in that middle ground, look at the row of yachts. They're all moored up. It's quite a quite a packed um, area of of yachts and and different boats. Uh, atmospheric perspective. We've got those hills in the background. That's the other side of the the bay or the harbour here. I think it's Sheldon. I think it's the name of the town. But the distant hills. Um, trying to think about the value of those hills they it's, it's a bright sunny day so maybe there's a little bit of sort of haziness about the atmosphere so we're, we're trying to need to try and think about the subtle um color temperature changes creating that depth and the the uh the distant town there nestling along the shore if i just zoom in there the, the distant town there um danger of course zooming in as we then start to see <laughs> too much detail all those windows and lights and dark We've got to keep it got to keep it fairly simple but think about that at atmospheric perspective getting in the getting in the depth as i've covered on a, a few previous videos uh next timing as with any watercolor you need to plan the sequence of painting carefully um since the you know, paint's going to dry out quickly. Where I am right now is is actually fairly humid. It's uh, it's hovering between seventy and seventy five percent humidity. So I'm going to have to get I'm going to have to get my hair dryer out at stage just to speed up the process for you. Um, but trying to think about the the sequence and the drying time and uh, painting dark over light. The water reflections would need to be painted over while previous layers are still damp a little bit to achieve some soft edges might need to um uh, think about lifting out if i don't get those don't get those um uh those soft edges color mixing color mixing the scene's got a range of browns blues greens 
Uh, we're we're going to be mixing quite a few colours from my palette. I will go over my, my palette of colours with you. Um, and I will, as I go through, I will try and describe what colours I'm mixing together um, as I go through. Uh, we've got some figures over there on the left-hand side. Figures are always a good idea, even in a harbour scene, if you can, um, to add a little bit of extra interest and also scale to the scene as well. So we've got some figures there, a bit of movement also. Finally, my, <laughs> my photo is a little bit of an angle. You can see we're sloping down top left upon right, so I'm going to have to compensate for that. Of course, I will have a tr I will try and get a horizontal um, uh, horizon there for, for, for the painting. Right, so I'm going to take you through my whole process of the painting, starting with the all-important outline drawing. Okay, so materials. I've got Saunders Waterford cold press paper, 300 grams, 15 inches by 11 inches. Normal palette of colours for me, uh, colours by Mark Jackman in the UK, Jackman's Art Materials, neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green, green green, cobalt green, it's a little fly in there. Cobalt green. Sorry. Yeah, cobalt green. Cerulean blue. Cobalt blue. Ultramarine blue. Alison crimson. Cadmium red. Light red. Cadmium orange. Cadmium yellow. Uh, lemon yellow. Gouache. White gouache. And a lavender down there. Right. Then, first of all, get rid of this little spider. Right. First of all, then, the drawing and trying to get that composition right. My photo is a little bit at an angle, so I need to compensate for that, make sure the horizon is pretty much level. Um, I mentioned the perspective and the architecture on the left-hand side, the combination of all of these boats in the scene as well, and these reflections. A lot of, a lot of the composition will be with the water. So boats roughly there. Then the background hills, and then the buildings on the left-hand side, and then we got those those lines of those steps leading us into the the composition around around that left-hand side. Right, first of all, then starting, I'm going to start top left corner and just get in the outline of those buildings on the left-hand side and drawing fairly lightly at the moment, just in case I want to change my mind with the position of that, that building and then the background hills, little indication of the... Now make the, the actual peak of these hills, not right in the middle, just right of centre and then the a gentle slope down to the right. Back to the buildings, they come down, there's lots of shapes and objects in the distance down there, down buildings or huts or something. And then we've got the town just below That hill on the left-hand side, that's the, that's the sort of far side of the bay. A rough indication of the waterline on the other side. Now, coming down the left-hand side, we've got a, a slope here where there's some figures. Oh, not that steep, more like that. There's some figures. on that side there and there so the lights coming from I should have mentioned that the lights coming from the left hand side a couple of figures and then there's a wall here and the base of the wall the shadow of that the car shadow of the wall is roughly 
horizontal. Yeah. And the bottom step, let's get that one in first. The bottom step is like that. And there's three in between. So one, two, three. Get perspective right. down a little bit more vertical. Tucks around the corner there. Boats. Uh, do I like that rubber inflatable boat? I think I'll replace it with a normal, <laughs> should I say a normal boat? Um, so let's get in a boat in here. Start with the front boats first of all. there and then now there's this large white boat with a couple of white boats together but let's get that other one just just slightly below slightly below that one there and the water line so front, back, and then another one just behind it. So they're, they're sort of going off at a, a slight angle up to the right. So the far side of the boat first. And she's almost horizontal. And then the near side of the boat, that's got the curve to it. And then bottom of the boat, it's a little bit lower in the water, that one. Now there's a blue boat behind this one. I'm going to move it slightly to the left. Let's have that one there. That's that blue boat. And then we've got to fill in the gap here. So a large white boat in the middle with the blue tarpaulin on the top. There and then. Lots more boats. And there's quite a few facing us in the middle. So I'm just going to think about just the shapes of the objects I see, not really, and not as such thinking about boats. So horizontal water lines. few more lines over there. Um, let's get a boat in here. So it's quite a nice yacht there. And then just beyond it we've got the water's edge. Now there are a few um, boys in floating in the water. And obviously with those, we can place them wherever we want to, to suit the composition. So let's get in a, one in there, reflection of that, and have a couple over here, a bit smaller in the distance. And then down here, there's a funny, <laughs> funny sort of object. 
um, that looks like it was some kind of support for something. But there's this. Sort of opening and then what looks like some sort of concrete base on its on its end. And the sides and then the shadow from that little opening. Right, um, back to the base of these buildings, just finish off this a little bit. Then uh, just a few lines here to indicate the tops and the bottoms of the windows and, and little balconies up there. And some of those windows, they're, they're reflecting, or maybe it's the, maybe they've got sort of glass uh, barriers on, the, on, their, on their balconies, so like a glass screen. That's enough detail there. I'm not going to put the reflections in. There's there's reflection from the buildings coming down there. There's the reflection from that boat there, this boat here. And then generally a few more reflections in between the boats. So that is pretty much the drawing done. So plan painting wise is starting from the top, working my way down, covering most of the scene except for the boats. I'm gonna paint around those and maybe some of those lighter glazing on, on the building in the, on the left hand side. And also some of the rooftops on the distant buildings, they're catching a little bit of light as well. Not so sure if, actually I'm not so sure if I'll leave them, leave that, them as the white paper. That might bring them forward just a little bit too much. So I'll glaze over that, what, put a wash over those, but a light, a lighter wash so that when it dries, that could be not as bright as the white paper, so to speak. And then paint the, the C, the base color of the C, that sort of slightly darker blue than the sky and get in a base color for the walkway on the left hand side as well um, and then let it dry and then go in with the dark so that's that's the plan brushes wise i'm going to start with my trusty tintoretto number six a synthetic mop brush got a Got a good point as well. So starting with the sky, a cerulean blue will be all right. Maybe a little bit of alloys and crimson in there just to warm it up a bit. But keep it light in that left hand side because the the lights coming from the left now go a little bit more intense. Try to get rid of this spider. then come over the hill now I'm leaving a few areas here white because I can see in the distance some rooftops that are actually quite bright so let's just keep my options open down there 
come over the so where I'm painting now that's going to be the buildings on the far side there bottom of the hill and right so this is where I now need to start thinking about the tops of the boats tops of the boats just catching the light there we are now um, down into the water a more intense blue what blue will that be maybe a warmer blue so ultramarine ultramarine blue and I might go just a little bit warmer as I come down it into the foreground now holding my brush closer to the the business end Actually, I can go over the boats because the sides of the boats were, were, were lo almost looking into the light. The light's kind of sort of coming down this way. And a lot of those boats are going to be darker. Even though the boats are white, they're darker than the water, except for the tops of them. Yeah, like that. Come down now to the bottom and maybe go just a little bit more intense with the blue around those boys. around this boy here and then I can go over this this is going to be darker than the sea and now I come down let's mix in a little bit of burnt sienna in that maybe a little bit of red as well So because the water is so shallow here, it's, it's obviously showing the, the sort of quite bright red sand below. It's just a few inches below the surface. There's a bit of disturbance in the water on the left hand side here. Over the edge of the paper, I've got masking tape all around the outside. You may not, you may not see this masking tape. It's pretty much the same color as the paper, but um, you can you can sort of see that line there. That's the edge of my masking 
masking tape. Right, let's keep this fairly light over here. Um, a little bit cooler in places, this promenade, this walkway. And up to the bottom of the buildings, let's paint around those figures as carefully as I can. Don't mind the heads, just really the, the bodies and then up to the buildings. Really anything, bit of yellow ochre maybe. So just make sure I've covered the whole paper except for those areas I want to handle in a, in a particular delicate way or those, those bits of the composition that are going to be um, light, like those, those boats in that middle ground, the light hitting the tops of those boats. Right, next step is let this dry. I'm gonna get my hairdryer out just to speed up things a little bit because we're now gonna go in with the darks, okay? So the wash has dried, it's gone lighter. I'm not worried about these blemishes, these colored flowers, this blooming appearing here because a lot of those areas are go over again and sometimes in watercolor they can be they can be quite attractive. I love that shape there, that sort of semicircular shape there. However, that's going to be obliterated and covered um, shortly with, uh, with shade and, and reflections. Right, plan here then those hills in the background, getting in the base color of the grassy fields. Now, I don't want to go too bright with the green um, we're trying to push it back, we're trying to get a sense of depth here. And then when that's a little bit drier, going with the trees and the hedges and trying to define the, the buildings um, towards the, the bottom of the hill. Right, so first of all then, that green. For the field, so I'm using a spring green here, but a very weak mixture of it. So a very weak mid green color. And just come down to basically where the town starts. On that far side. There's a few fields that we can see down to the right as well. Now, while that's drying, I can go in with some of the rooftops on the, the buildings in the town. Maybe starting over here on the left, because that's where there's a darker shape, a building or something appearing over there. So I'll start over there. But Sienna altering blue and
just a few horizontal lines there, preserve some of the paper there. Could be a building or a rooftop. And then coming down into the town on that left hand side. Now the rooftops, let's make them sort of a light brown or light red colour. Do I need to go a little bit darker with some of those buildings? Well, let's just go with this light brown first of all. Has come down to drink. <laughs> uh, right, maybe the base of the buildings as well. And there's a sort of sandy beach on the far side. All right, uh, next. So that grass, the fields still haven't dried yet. Um, let me do the buildings on the left-hand side. So those buildings, geometric shapes. I've done the drawing, hopefully got the perspective right. The angle of those balconies and the, the uh, higher the higher um, levels, it gets darker towards the bases, so a little bit lighter at the top, and the building nearest to us, just above the figures, that's quite cool. But overall, the buildings are darker at the base, and then we've got these dark shadows coming out to um, coming out to the boats. So let's start with my cooler blue, cobalt blue, and start from the left hand side, but down to that wall. Now, go a little bit warmer with this yellow ochre. And I need to cut around some of the, some of these bright screens that we've got up there. Just catching the light. A little bit of blue at the base, and then I need to go really dark now with the shade, the shadow at the bottom of that building. So burnt umber, a bit of neutral tin, altering blue. Actually, it's a it's a warmish shadow. You'd go darker. Oh, 
watch out for my figures. Come down to the bottom of the shadow and indicating that slope on the just um, just behind the figures there's that slope. And then at the base of the buildings, we've got these shadows coming out. Meeting the boats. Something like that, some lots of geometric shapes there. The wall then on this left hand side is well it's got bits of cool and warm in it. So we'll start off with cool at the top, a little bit of light hitting the top of that wall, and then down to the base of the wall and again it gets darker that horizontal horizontal uh, base of the shadow right these steps There's the top step, next one down. So I'm using the flat edge of my mop brush here, got a good edge. Next step down. So these these shady lines they get a little bit narrower as we go into the distance. Last one, last step. And then up. There we go. Right, I think my background hills the grass is nearly dry so I can now go in with that darker green so viridian green of those hills viridian green this sort of patchwork of 
I guess there are oak trees or something and a few little hedgerows as well. But, and, and these little patches of fields appearing up there. Right, so ridge and green. Now, not too dark, okay. We want to push it, push it back a bit. And again, I'm using the side of my brush. A little bit of red and green side of my brush to just to note the shape of those trees, maybe a few silhouetted trees on the skyline there. Then down that right hand side, again just a few little trees popping their heads up. Don't be too fussy with the background, it is, it is the background, we want the main focal point to be these boats. So down to now the town and these buildings. Bit of green, but mostly reading green. They're starting to take shape. I'm still not sure about the value of those buildings, whether they could be just a little bit bluer, a little bit darker. Um, I think, yes, just a tiny bit darker. Wash out my brush. And back to well, a little bit of cerulean blue, maybe a bit of lavender. And now I'm not going to completely cover these houses. Just leave a few little bits unpainted, which could be Rooftops the sun, with the light coming from the left could be little bits of the wall shining against the light. And we've got a, a nice bit of, with the transparency of watercolour, it's quite a nice effect with these, these layers on top of each other and I think it's particularly effective with these houses. There we go. The hedgerows, um, the darker, the darker green shapes, the edges are just a little bit too harsh. So I'm just going to soften that up a little bit with, with a damp sponge. Just a little bit. Just where the edges are a bit 
as I say, a bit too harsh. It kind of, for me, it brings it too far forwards. I think this sponge needs replacing. It's falling to bits. Right. We're almost down to the boats now, boats and reflections. Um, first of all, though, there's a little bit of a darker, warmer colour coming in from this side. Before we get into the dark reflections, there's this sort of well, a pattern, a few ripples, circular pattern of ripples coming out. And we can see more of the, 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 the sandy bed below, below the water. So I'm going to get in, well, use this lie red here, uh, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Now I don't want to go too dark. And then with the brush, I want to try and get those, the pattern of the, of these, the circular pattern of waves coming out, little ripples coming out from that bottom left corner. then they're sort of coming up against this object here and then the the ripples sort of go all over, all over the place they're sort of then circulating around this object here um, that, that object down in the, the bottom right corner so let's um, continue with this I need to be a bit more careful here. We're trying to get the the circular pattern of these waves. Appearing around that. Go weaker still. Then some of these little reflections, they become a little bit more horizontal, go over the edge of the paper, narrower lines, closer together maybe. Um, over here, they, they almost go across each other. There we go. And that should dry a little bit lighter. Uh, it might just soften up some of the edges here as well.
there. Right, I might just let this dry a bit before going on to the next step, which is going to be the boats and reflections, and then these dark reflections down that, down that left-hand side. And then, I think finally, then it's gonna be details of the buildings. All right, boats and reflections then. A slightly darker color in the sea for the sides of the boats. So a sort of bluey gray, really. A bit of cobalt blue, burnt sienna. And then just get in these different shapes. Generally, all pretty much the same colour, these boats. So that's that left hand one in place of the, the inflatable. Uh, there's got to be a boat here. Then there's the blue boat with the cabin there. And then main boat here. And then this little one here. So not, hopefully a nice sort of connection of different boats. Now reflections. Darker. Bit of cobalt. Green. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and then just where we see those dark reflections. Now, generally, the boats closer to us will have more reflections, and those further away will have. They'll have, well, hardly any reflections, those in the distance. Altering blue, burnt sienna. And 
bit of cobalt green as well. few little lines in between the boats as well over to this main one and hopefully as the hull of the boat is still a little bit damp actually has dried a bit but as it's damp we get a nice soft transition from the from the boat to the reflection let's come down come down a little bit and then the boat in between and then this right hand boat just a few little reflections on those maybe some coming in from the right hand side generally the shape of the of the boats right uh, now the reflections on the left hand side I'm going to use some of this quinacridone gold in that Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Gold. to the, the edge of the step and become a little bit more erratic with the with those reflections. Right, need to get in the this concrete structure here and go around that opening.
bit of burnt sienna yellow ochre just leave a few little speckles of stonework showing A little bit of a cool blue, there's something lurking below the surface there. Something like that. And then something dark in this hole. Almost pure neutral tint here. Got no idea what it is. I, I assume it's some sort of concrete base here that um, was uh, it's lost its top and it just sort of le been left there. Maybe it was a support for a jetty or something. Anyway, it's quite a nice shape down the bottom right corner. Right, some darker sides to this structure. Burn timber, a little bit of neutral tint. And then a little bit of shadow on that right hand side as well. And a little bit of shadow from this circular thing and that gives that really does give us an indication of where the light's coming from doesn't it sort of up there in that top top right corner um i think i need to go a bit darker some of those shapes coming down in the distance A few darker shapes in here just to give it more of the, the feeling of the, the building. Right, now I need to define these boats. We're almost down to the detail stage now. Detail stage, so smaller brush, synthetic brush here, and defining, defining some of the Details on the boats, the top, notice the boats, they've got a darker line at the top, across the top, they've got a darker water line, we need to put in the, the um, those buoys as well, floating in the water and their reflections. And maybe just a few more details on those, on the uh, buildings. Okay, and the figures of course, as well, figures. Actually, let's do the figures first of all. So, uh, Oops. So legs, shadow, A little bit of clothing will give this right one a bit of a lavender, a bit of a lavender top, and then the one on the left. Maybe keep that one fairly white, maybe darker. Like a bottom there. 
building on the left windows just a few windows so it just sort of speaks to you as a building a few rectangular windows and a few vertical lines as well I can see where I don't know if drain pipes or the kind of supports for the balconies maybe like that a few little stones and whatnot on the on the steps there uh, maybe just a little bit more detail to the rooftops in the town just a few darker rooftops because I went darker with the buildings but then the rooftops got some that got a little bit lighter so a few darker rectangles it's quite a complicated background so you've got to kind of simplify it and then also we could put in just <laughs> I'm not going to put in every single window but just a few little dots here and there just to indicate some it's a sort of dwelling, their dwellings over there, their, their town. It's a, it's a town with different buildings. Here we are. Uh, some of these boats are darker than others. So let's get in. Um, let's get in a darker one there. And then also... So now some lines across the top of these boats. So altering blue. Ultra in blue, burnt sienna. Actually, some of them are quite brown. Let's put in and try not to make them too perfect, just add in a few little bits and pieces where the oars go in. The more we go into the distance, the more abstract it will become. And then these two boats, these two boats here, let's give them more of a, a woodish top to them. So the far side. And then the near side and then the other one.
then some water lines. Now ideally that needs to be a little bit of a soft edge to these water lines. Just below the surface we can see some darker marks in here. Just coming out from the bottom of that step, don't know what it is, but just a few little darker marks in there. Right, these boys. Uh, let's do two red. <laughs> Because they're out of the sun, they've they've gone a bit faded. Two red um, and one one blue. Do you reckon two two red and one blue? Yeah, that'll do. So a a weak alloys and crimson. Then the reflections from that. And then soften up that edge with same brush but just clear water just to give it a bit of a, a shine and then another another pink one here and reflections The blue one, or well, let's actually make it lavender. And reflections. This is quite a nice sort of pattern around around this object here. Uh, a few little bits of darkness. I could actually go a little bit darker on the sides of this thing. Uh, right, there are a few, there are a few ropes that are leading from some of these boats into the water. So get in a few of those. One there. One there, one there. We're getting a few masts as well. Now, the mass could go light, could go dark. Uh, and there's a few posts on the left-hand side as well. Um, let's go. Let's do a, do a few lighter posts. Bring a brush. Ring a brush and um, some white straight out the tube. Make sure the brush is clean. 
slightly damp as well. Mix around. Ideally I'd be dipping in clear water. Uh, let's give these figures here a little bit of highlighting. mainly on the left hand side and then some vertical lines for posts and things That white that would that would dry a little bit. Being gouache, it's going to dry a little bit lighter. So I'm going to have to go in darker over there. Let's actually add in some some little highlights too. Some of these ropes. Yeah, I'm going to go in darker, so I'll use my rigger brush still, uh, clean that off, get the white paint off. And something darker, not too dark, it's going to be, these are distant masks, so mix up something up there, maybe a little bit darker. That's too dark. Uh, yeah, that's okay. So make sure I've got my edge right and then and this might be affected where it sort of goes right up against the those lighter masks. If you at an angle. There. Um, there is a bit of froth on the water down there, but I think that'd be too much, too much detail down in the bottom left hand corner. Little bits of sort of floating debris as well. Um, but I think I've I think I've captured the scene all right. As I normally do at the end of the painting process, do a little bit of a, a self-critique and try and summarize to myself um, what I think went well and maybe things to be aware of next time I do a painting similar to this, it's things that I could improve on. So uh, just to recap, a harbour scene, Timoth, Devon, UK, lots of boats in the water, lots of challenges um, to face us as a watercolour painter with the reflections in the water. I think they sort of came out right uh, as regards their shape and a, feeling a little bit of movement and the uh, as I said at the beginning the, the transparency of uh, these these overlying overlaying washes um, yeah so I, I think uh, I I think that came out okay and the, and the, the, the kind of uh, water to pigment ratio as well that sort of came out all right also the range of values uh, dark in there trying to Trying to, trying to get that maximum contrast where where there's lighter areas and then slap up against it some something darker. So we got that, for example, with the figures. 
As regards the boats, maybe mm, I, I did make that boat there a little bit dark, so there's a bit of contrast between the darkness of that boat and the light above it. So that sort of came out okay, but maybe I could have, maybe I could have made some of the boats a little bit darker. The architecture of the buildings in the top left corner, they, I think they came out okay. They, they sort of look like buildings. I tried to do them in a loose way, also trying to get the perspective right as well. Um, there's sort of like two or three levels, stories high, and that that perspective, the, that angle there, and that's my horizon. So I think that came out okay as well. All of these different boat shapes, maybe my photo was a lot wider than my paper dimensions, so I had to sort of squash things in a little bit. Maybe there a little bit congested in that middle area, but there, there were a lot of boats there. It was midsummer uh, when I took the photo. So yeah, a lot of boats. Uh, maybe I could have reduced them a little bit in that central area just to, just to expose a little bit more of the sea. Uh, then there was the challenge of perspective and depth, trying to push those background hills back. I softened things up with a little sponge where the edges were too hard. Maybe I could have done the same up there. This might be a little bit too too harsh, the edges, a little bit of pencil line showing they're a bit untidy, um, accidental splattering. <laughs> um, I was a bit erratic with my initial wash. I mean, things like that, they could be made into something. I mean, that could be that could be a little little sort of seabird, possibly quite a big body. Another one there. Do another one there as well. So they these these marks, they could be they could be made into something if uh, if it bothers you. Uh, we we were talking about timing as well. Um, I think I got the, the, the timing right as regards my, my, my process and letting things dry. As you know, I use the hairdryer to speed things up so that the, um, the, the, the surface was the right kind of dryness for me before I applied extra, extra paint on top. Uh, color mixing, yeah, well, we've got a, quite a wide range of colors here, blues, greens, browns, warms and cools. That's always a good thing to have those in a watercolour painting, the contrast of warm versus cool. So the coolness of this whole area here, slightly contrasting with the, the warmth coming towards the foreground, but particularly the, the warmth over there on, on the left-hand side. Um, figures, I think the figures came out all right. My two little figures there, sense of movement. They've got their summer, they've got their summer clothing on. That one there looks like a, he or she's got a beach bag. Accidentally, of course. Um, yeah, I got the angle of the photo right. So I hope you enjoyed the process. And um, yeah, as I said before, I'll catch up with you on the next video. Thanks very much indeed. Bye bye.